Welcome to this episode of Safe Home Podcast for struggling teens and their families finding their healing path. I am Beth Syverson, a mom of an 18-year-old son, Joey, who has been dealing with drug addiction, depression, anxiety, and suicidal ideation for several years. I'm walking beside him as he struggles with his recovery while I work on my own personal growth and healing. I'm so excited because this morning's guest is Casey Ferriello. She has created a brand new online community for parents, just like me, that have struggling teens, and it's coming out in January, 2022, and it's called Other Parents Like Me. And she's also going to tell us her own story as a parent of a struggling teen, and she'll explain how she came up with this concept for this new resource for parents. And I have a special surprise for you at the end. So welcome, Casey. I'm so excited to have you on. Thank you, Beth. I'm I'm very excited to be here. A little nervous, but excited. Is this your first podcast? Um, I did... um... One other, um, so yes, I'm still a brand new podcast person. <laughs> okay, don't worry. It'll be it'll be fun. We'll just make it uh, just like a conversation between you and me. Good. Uh, well, why don't you just say a little bit about your family situation and what brought you to this place where you create a whole thing for parents? So I have three children. Um, my oldest is um, 21. Um, she is currently living in New York City and has suffered from severe um, anxiety. Um, my middle boy uh, has um, substance use issues that really took over our household when he was in ninth grade. Um, and then my youngest is part of the LGBTQ community and has um, depression. and. I would love to say that all of these things started to appear at different times and I had lots of time to, you know, adjust and move and not be in crisis literally every moment of the day since 2015, but I would be lying to you. So, oh. um, so yes, everything seemed to happen at once. Um, but honestly, my, my middle child, his manifestation was the most difficult uh, to operate around with running away and punching holes in the wall and all sorts of those kinds of fun things. Oh, yes. I recognize a lot of that. Uh, What, what was your son's drug of choice? Um, He likes to do combos. Um, Oh, super dangerous. Yes. So marijuana is his starter. Um, he also likes um, acid and stuff like that, um, LSD, psychedelics. My son does that too. Yeah, that's that's, that's been a, let. That's we are in a yeah. different part of the path with him, and um, he's um, he's had a lot of time with us with working with us as a family, and, and is in you know somewhat of a better space for recovery. Um, but yeah, he likes to mix DXM. I heard, I was listening to your son talk about all those mixing things. Uh, yeah. Uh, so um, all those things were very familiar to me and researching like how to get the best high was a big part of it back when he was yes. in ninth and 10th grade. I swear if these kids used that, that research ability on their like papers for school, they'd be like <laughs> major scholars. Absolutely. But <laughs> They put a lot of time and energy into finding exactly the most potent weed strain or whatever. Yes. yes. Oh my gosh. And unfortunately, there's so much information out there Mm -hmm. on YouTube or wherever, and they can find anything they want to find. It's terrifying. Especially the dark web. Yes. Oh gosh. I don't even want to think about that. Oh, so what all did you, uh, what all did you send your kid to? What, when, what ended up helping? So we tried an IOP. This is so in 2018. We went to Paris and had something was missing, this Wi Fi thing, and I couldn't find it. And he, of course, as everybody knows, was uh, not telling the truth about it because he wanted to sell it because he was buying drugs in. <laughs> in Paris. Paris wow. Um and um I went through his bag, found it and found cocaine. And that was the <gasps> first time that I was like, "Oh, this is this is serious." And a couple uh, weeks later, my daughter, I'll never forget, like I think she was the reason we really moved forward was said, "Do you know he's an addict?" <laughs> so <laughs> so we 
So we, then we started that whole process. I'm sure lots of parents, this will not sound unfamiliar, an IOP. We tried a, a residential mm-hmm. treatment center that insurance would pay for. There was all throughout this running away, overdosing the seven-day detox clinics, suicide that he told me it was my fault. He tried to commit it. Uh, back out to another residential treatment, um, stuck with him in the house because school would not take him for two and a half weeks because they Whoa. said he was not going to be safe. And he finally um, had a major overdose on my daughter's anxiety medication, which is why I mentioned the anxiety oh. <laughs> part for oh, her. No. Um, and that's still something that kind of rings in her head, you know. Um, oh. And we ended up sending him to a wilderness program. And uh, then he went to a therapeutic boarding school, um, some transitional living, and he tried living on his own. Um, and that was not uh, this past year. Didn't go 100% great um, back to usage. But our relationship is amazing and so open. And I've listened to you and your son. It seems like you guys have similar um, mm-hmm. So, you know, when he's struggling or has a slip here and there, he's back home, he's living with us, he's present, he's here, and, you know, he's honest what, if there's a slip here or there. And I think it's it's so just a, a bright light that I never thought was possible. And the other yeah. two also are doing quite well. Oh, that's so neat. it's, yeah, so... It, 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 there is there is light at the end of the tunnel. Does it mean yeah. that the tunnel's all not going to go dark here and there? But <laughs> yeah, it can but think, at least we have communication. So yeah, I think I used to think that this would be over someday. I'm getting to be realizing shh, there's nothing that's going to be done with this. You know, until both of us are gone. You know, this is going to be a lifelong struggle for both of us. For me managing myself while my son is in crisis occasionally and him just trying to figure it out and slipping, like you said, and it's not going to be like, okay, I'm done now. And everything's going to be perfect from now on out. I don't think it ever works that way. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't. It's a roller coaster ride. And it's, um, mm-hmm. I, I was definitely one of the parents who thought it was a sprint and we were all going to be fixed and he was going to be back know. to school. <laughs> I know. And, no, that it was, it's a marathon. Um, it's a marathon with everybody, with all of them, even with myself and how I'm trying to work on myself just to not fall back into rescuing behaviors and all those, yes. you know, slippery slopes that I can fall into as a parent myself. Oh, it's so easy. I catch myself all the time. No, he can do this. Someone said once, if if a person can do it on their own, let them do it on their own. I, I learned that as a teacher. I teach students with special needs. And, you know, I learned I don't need to open their book for them and find their page number. They can do that. Let them do that. That's good. Even if it takes a little longer than it would have taken me to do it, they can do it. So I use those same principles with my son. I try, you know, if he can call the doctor and get his own meds, he needs to do that. I don't need to do everything for him. It's hard though. It's hard to back off because you know that how much trouble they can get into if they yeah. if they screw it up. Like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Your son is about my son's age. How old is your son? Um, he is now twenty. Like holy. Twenty. Cow. <laughs> what? The two at the beginning. Oh my goodness. Yes. Whew. Yeah, Joey just turned 18. So we're just a couple years, couple years behind you. Oof. Yeah. I bet he really appreciates being able to tell you that he slipped and not have you flip out and whatever, get him in trouble or whatever. Uh, I bet that's really a relief for him. Yeah. He still was very nervous to tell us that he slipped um, recently. And when he found out, like, we did not turn into the the, the, the two-handed monster that we used to turn into. Ah. Yes. <laughs> um, he, he, you could see his whole demeanors change. And it's <sighs> just amazing. Um, he's back to sitting on the couch and saying, hey, come watch some anime with me. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> whatever, whatever we got to do. I, I've listened to, to uh, 
lots of music that's not my favorite, yes. but it can it connects us, right? Exactly. So whatever exactly. It, whatever some, it takes. Some connection that you can talk about later. And for his birthday, I gave him a, t- a sweatshirt from one of the anime shows we watched together. And he was like, oh. this is the cool. This is so win. So right there, oh. it's all good. <laughs> that's so great. And where is he working now? Um, college hunks who haul junk. <laughs> <gasps> oh, it's like a workout that you get paid yes, for. Exactly what he says. And that's how I love his, that. with his recovery is to how that physical part makes a big difference. I think those physical jobs are so good for these kids. You know, it gets you out of your head. Mm-hmm. You just are like using your body, like laboring. Mm-hmm. Uh, Joey, I don't know if you heard Joey's got a new job as a dog groomer. No, so he that. washes, yeah, he washes and dries dogs all day, which is great. You know, there's no paperwork. There's no conversations with other clients or anything. You just deal with dogs and get soapy and, you know, it's in the real world. It feels like those physical jobs are so good. I'm really, really proud of both of our boys. Yeah, That's me great. Too. Me too. Yay. So let's transition to how did you go from having a struggling kid to creating a whole brand new resource for parents? What was that path? I'm pretty sure that you felt this too. They were young, right? He was 14 when Mm -hmm. he started. Mm -hmm. Um, And there was so much shame, um, isolation, and I just felt hopeless. Basically, my household as the behaviors escalated became a prison that's really what it felt like like Mm -hmm. neither of us could work my anytime my husband left that's when he would escalate so Mm -hmm. um because I was the person who uh, directed a lot of the aggression and um anger at um and I do think now that it's because it's the one person he knew that would always love him and no yes. matter what. And there's still that little bit of insecurity about dad, mm-hmm. you know, um, mm-hmm. trying to find resources, trying to find someone to talk to. You know, one of the only things suggested to me was to go to a 12-step program. And mm-hmm. it did work for me in getting like at least starting to take care of myself again because Mm -hmm. when you're in that crisis like there is just when people tell you self-care like it's the new buzzword right you're just like yeah uh uh-huh okay (laughs) come live in my household and try and figure out how you're gonna do self-care yeah yeah there's no bubble baths going on here no there's no bubble baths (laughs) um and so I, as as the process continued and we had wilderness and we started to get healthier ourselves as parents and he mm-hmm. started to, we could start to see the the blue in his eyes again and the shine in his eyes like i i was just like wow if only i had had help before mm. you know um and i started uh, volunteering for the program that john went to and running online parent groups there and we're going two years now and just seeing the new parents coming in and the transformation after a couple months Mm. was amazing to me and I joined with two other moms who are from their kids also were in the programs uh the same program and holy cow like it's the most amazing transformation to see and all I thought is every parent should have this. Yeah. I remember when I was that new parent, I had no idea what to do. I didn't know which end was up. I was just so scared. Just fear. Mm-hmm. Fear was the the ruling emotion. And fear is never a very good <laughs> place to live. It doesn't help you very much. It just keeps everything hard. So if I would have had actual people that could help me or at least just listen and commiserate with me, even that would have been great. But I found that our healthcare system to be completely lacking for help for parents. We had a couple of family therapy sessions, but that was horrible. That was not helpful. That was uh, people who did not understand addiction and uh, it was horrible. So yeah, I would have loved something like other parents like me when I was a new parent of a struggling teen. 
That's kind of Joy's and my reason for starting this podcast too. We want to help other people to avoid the pitfalls that we fell into and try to make their lives a little bit easier than what we had to go through. So passing it down a little bit. Wow. So you've done these support groups through your other organization for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. Were they like once a week or? So we started out during COVID with one and we ended up with, I now have eight. I run three of them. We have a parent, Mm -hmm. a men's group, a divorced mom's group and a widow's group as well. Um, Okay. So, but I'm one person. (laughs) And, uh-huh, yeah. and I just kid it. I just, I just had this bigger vision. This, like, you know, this uh-huh. just needs to go beyond this, uh-huh. this um, small scope. Even though eight is a lot. Um, yeah. But uh, and that, and those those were all parents at, at one, program one program in yeah. In where where are you located? So I'm in New Jersey. The program. Um, I just don't know if I was allowed to mention it. So oh, oh sure. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, so the program is in balanced continuum of care. And they're in Arizona. Okay. Really always wanted to give back. They gave so much back, so much to us mm. and so much hope to us as a family through family weekends. And, you know, mm. that I wanted to do something to make it more powerful. And in fact, um, the owner, Patrick Barrasso, after I started it, said the first family weekend he couldn't get the pa- parents to stop talking to each other. In, oh, <laughs> and he said it was they, transformational for, for him. Because they had already had relationships from your support groups. Yeah. Wow. Now, when you started those support groups, did you have some sort of structure or were you just like open to whoever wants to talk about whatever? Structure is definitely that I learned from the Alan on way. Um, mm-hmm. Is structure very important? For people to know, like, okay, kind of center into this space, you know, a little meditation, a little kind of an intro. And I was more Al Anon like, and then I realized as time went on that that doesn't speak to everybody, even though our the imbalance uses the 12 steps, it doesn't speak to all parents. Mm-hmm. Some people don't want to talk about God. Some people, mm-hmm. they just want tools or they want to learn how to do self-care or they want to hear something that inspires them or something that mm-hmm. connects to them. And so I just was, I'm one of those people who just grabs from podcasts, grabs from, you know, um, and anywhere and everywhere. It's just to yeah. kind of say, hey, th- this speaks to me. Does this speak to you? And, and we just have a conversation and then a closing and the parents have said, like, it's just so nice to have a place mm-hmm. where there's other parents, you know. It sounds great because you create a, a container. It's mm-hmm. not like an all day thing where you have no rule. It, it's contained in like an hour, I think. Right. Mm-hmm. You've had um, an hour. So, you know, for one hour you can go get fed, you know, get help, fill up your cup and share whatever you need to share. And then then it's over. So I think that's really smart to create that structure. Otherwise, it becomes like a bitch fest or, or right. like a exactly. just venting. Um, yeah. So to have that structure and limited time. But um, sounds like you had eight different meetings every week. Now, tell us how that differs from the the organization you've created now. Oh, so other parents like me, I am I am extremely blessed. We have, uh, many of them are from Imbalance, I will be honest at first, we, but we're starting to gain more peer parents. So I have two peer parents in 45 different meetings a week when we, when we fully launch with something for trauma and adoptive parents, um, LGBTQ parents, parents with LGBTQ kids, um, general meetings, men's, women's, divorced. We have a guy who's an expert in parent alienation you know, through divorce, like, it's just, I, I am, I think, one of the most blessed people on this planet, because of having these beautiful people stepping in and saying, yeah, we want to, we, we don't want anybody else to feel alone, even though they're scared, too, of like, you know, being the ones running the meetings. (laughs) Yeah. But you're not saying that any of these peer parents have all the answers, right? They were just, Peers. We're just peers. Um, We're all going through yeah. this together. Uh, how can we support each other? Well, that's that's beautiful. That's a beautiful thing because there's really no one answer anyway. Yeah, yeah. One of the things that always struck me is that 
the what the parents in the other rooms that kind of became my practice program is that seeing someone else further along and mm-hmm. even if they're that further along person had a child with a slip or who ran or whatever and seeing that parent still have peace on their face mm-hmm. right there was like the biggest aha moment for many people uh, it's possible it's possible to stay whole and connected despite whatever your kid is doing mm-hmm. that's dangerous and terrifying yeah yeah <laughs> yes, <laughs> terrifying and our, our hope is to be global 24-7. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's no reason not to be right on Zoom. And it, I have a mastermind group with someone in Brazil and El Salvador and uh, London. So it, wow. it can happen. It, there's no geography anymore. You just have to check what time it is <laughs> yes. in the other place. Oh, time zones. <laughs> oh, yay. yay. But uh, that's the only obstacle, really, and occasionally connection issues, depending on where you are. But it's amazing what we can do nowadays with Zoom, you know, love it and hate it both, I guess. Yeah. Um, But it provides opportunities to get with a lot of people you never, ever, ever would have been able to get in touch with. Yeah. Agreed. And one of the things we added in there is we have a big, giant resource hub, and we're going to have speaker meetings every week. So you'll get people experts to watch and you i mean there's right now this is so cool they're they're loading into our website all of the resources um including your podcast which you know um and they have 500 things that they're trying to upload just for the launch and then we have more beyond that because that was the other part and i think that was maybe the same for you just trying to find information (laughs) <laughs> or someone yeah. who might speak to you, you know? <laughs> yeah. And just, just not knowing what to trust and, uh, you know, who's just wanting to get your money. And there, eh, there's a lot out there and you, you just don't know. So if you have resources that have been vetted by other parents, wow, that would be really great. And I suppose that resource list will grow as time goes on and as other parents share other tools that they found. Yeah. Yeah, and I know peer, the peer parents are excited to share even resources that we don't have on there yet. So yeah, yeah it'll just keep growing. And <laughs> are your resources, you know, do you have things for just for, you know, for all different kinds of people? Like, do you have the woo-woo kind of stuff and the more science-based stuff, the religious stuff? Do you have all yeah. of it? Yeah. Kind of runs the gamut. Runs so. the gamut with tools like from programs like Smart Recovery and um a center for motivation and change and i volunteer for the partnership to end addiction so i help mm. there with you know so there's free things out for parents as well mm-hmm. and, um yeah just podcast books um i mean podcast is like the new thing right um mm-hmm. just an article a blog you know 10 things to do today that you know will help you through the holidays and yeah all that stuff yeah Wow. Well, that alone sounds amazing. And then you get that, uh, all the meetings. And if you are a member, you get to go to how many meetings a month? Um, as many as you want. As many as you want. Okay. There's no limit. And there's, and there's 25 right now. There's 45 in a week. Oh, 45, 45. Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So, and all times of day, mm-hmm. uh, for, depending on your schedule. Right now it starts, the first one starts at 7 a.m. Eastern time and the last one's at 10 30 at night Eastern time. So everything is based Eastern time, but we try to, um, one of our big meetings is 1030 at night because that acknowledges the West Coast and maybe lunchtime for someone in Hawaii, Yeah, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So. Yeah. But eventually you'll go 24 seven and meet people that live in Australia and yeah. Asia and all the, wow. Well, it's, a, it's an amazing resource. What, what is it like? I mean, how, how would a person get involved in this? How do you become a client? How much does it cost? How does all that work? So we are in our pre-registration launch phase um, right now. And we have a Facebook page, an Instagram page, a LinkedIn page, a Twitter page. So you can look up other parents like me that way. And that will hook you up with um, how to re- our landing page to pre-register. And um, right now you'd get the 50% discount for the year. But if we settled on um, $100 a month or $1,000 for the year. So every pay stream has two Zoom windows available to it. 
and every Zoom window can have two people in it. So four people can be a part of this process. Oh. And the more So your your spouse, your other kids that kind of thing spouse aunts uncles grandparents oh. um there's a lot um, a lot of divorced people in this world yes. and then you know if you're in a good communication with your ex maybe that your ex and their new person and yourself and your uh, new person uh, would only have to pay for one pay stream as well and that's, oh wow that's uh, okay so a hundred dollars a month or a thousand dollars a year for uh basically your whole family can access it four people at a time right yeah. uh, at the most but that is incredible usually it's like only one person or you kind of feel like you're cheating if you're letting someone else yeah. watch your stuff right. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying no it's for your spouse and for other support people that are that are with your family because it yeah it affects everybody right that when you have a, a child with mental illness or substance use uh, the pets get affected everything <laughs> Too. the pets miss they them <laughs> do. oh my gosh yes so that's so great it's such a great service you're you're providing and Thank it's you. going to um, launch in january yes, right yes january 1 january 10th january 10th, january 10th. Day. okay oh i'm very excited i'm very excited yeah. we're doing lots of trainings with the peer parents right now um we're just allowing all of us to come and have a little bit of some holidays before we fully go into it. <laughs> uh, hold your breath. Well, I guess this is a good time to tell our little surprise. The surprise is that I'm going to be one of the peer parents. I'm so excited. <laughs> I was uh, doing a reference call for Heather. Y'all remember Heather from another episode, our life coach, and just raving about Heather. And then I found out about this problem. I'm like, what? This is amazing. So I get to be one too. Yes, I was so very excited, excited when I met you. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if it's going to be true, but I, I signed up to uh, run an adoption one. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's going to work out or um, or what, but um, you know that you have so many different niches, so yeah. I could fit in a couple of those. So I'm very excited to to help others in this other way besides the podcast and just my own regular life. But it's exciting for me because of the reach the worldwide reach, right? Mm -hmm. We can use our, w the wisdom that we've learned, we're still learning wisdom, we're in the middle of learning to help other people. A and I'm going to guess, we haven't done this yet, but I'm going to guess I'm going to learn a lot <laughs> as well from other people, from other peer yeah. parents, from other speakers, from other parents that are just starting out. How, how will that be for me to see someone that reminds me of myself, but like, five years ago. Mm. Mm. It's so, tough. I'll tell you, it's tough. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. To, do you get kind of jealous? Like they have these other resources that I didn't know about? No, because, that, because I'm glad that there's, it's, there's, I mean, stigma is getting less. I, I feel um, it's being more talked about. It's yeah, not I think just so. all hidden as much because there's just so many people, um, especially with the last year and a half, right? Yeah. You know, it's just yeah. more, it's more open and more talked about. So my mm -hmm. hope is that by it being more open and talked about and everybody, it's amazing how many people get very passionate when they get to a healthier place, even if the family, even if the person is still struggling, how yeah. much you want to give other people that, that healthy, that healthy feeling. Or yeah, that, definitely. Yeah, I don't know if that's the right word, but <laughs> oh, I totally get that. That's totally how I feel. I wake up and think, okay, this has to help somebody else because this cannot just end here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this, uh, yeah, our experience has to help other people. Uh, but you said that it's it's painful to see the new people. What? Why is it painful? <sighs> because it, you can feel it. You just feel it in your heart. You were, it comes right back. You remember, oh, you remember yeah, that remember. part and wanting the people, wanting people to be like, move to where you are. Like now is just not realistic. Yeah. I mean, it, this has taken me being like this with saying my son had, you know, was honest about a slip the other day is four years. <laughs> yeah. So, you yeah. know, and I don't know if everybody understands. I, I think, it sounds like you definitely do understand that this is not if really that's the focus. It's yeah, it's a constant thing to keep yourself in a healthier space. So that if something really bad happens again, 
you have the reserves. Yeah, right. You That you will be okay. Several weeks ago, it really just solidified in me that I am like literally a separate entity from my son. <laughs> I don't know why that was surprising to me, but I am not him. He is not me. He is separate. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess I'm still kind of kind of trying to get out of the enabling, you know, mode. But yeah, I am separate. And if he's having a horrible day, that doesn't mean I have to. Right. That was like, whoa, I thought if he was having a horrible day, whoop, there goes my day. Yeah. But no, I can continue to have a pretty okay day. Probably not my best day, but I can continue on and I'm okay. Mm -hmm. I can be okay. Yeah. That's a big realization. Yeah. I, I have a feeling I will I will have to catch my enabling for these other parents too, huh? Oh yeah. Like sure. I can't oh, fix yes. them either, but all right. Well, this will be just more practice, letting go, letting people learn their own way, their own path. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. One of my favorite sayings someone said to me one time is um, instead of having worry and all the other things um, with you on the, at, on the wheel, on the motorcycle, take them take the hand take worry's hands off the wheel and put them in the sidecar uh, yeah so that it's not controlling you anymore yeah it's there it's probably impossible to totally get rid of it when your son is struggling so much i mean you can't be like la 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 this is right. great no but yeah put it in the sidecar i like that image too thank you i did too that's, that's why good. i like to share that one i'm like yeah. it's a great image <laughs> yeah, put it in a sidecar and shut the top. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. They do have tops. Yes. Shut the top. <laughs> With the lock and key. <laughs> yeah. You stay in there. I got the wheel. I'm okay. Wow. Well, I am so looking forward to this. I wish you all the best as you launch this thing. And I hope people will go look it up. If they have friends or family members that are struggling, uh, to share your information. I'll put everything in the, in the show notes so they can access all the different ways. And is there anything else you wanted to share? Anything we didn't hit? Just that there is hope when, you, when there's hope through community. Yeah. Yeah, there is hope. There's hope for our kids, for ourselves, for our whole families, for the communities at large. Yeah. There is hope. Well, you're bringing that to the world. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, everyone, thank you for listening to Safe Home Podcast. You can find us too on social media everywhere and support us on Patreon if you are called to do so. And Casey and I want to make sure you stay, stay safe. safe.